words that in part define the multifaceted spirit that is Corey George. Pursuing this purpose passionately, his ability to transcend difficult circumstances has allowed him to find his niche as a radio personality, an empowerment coach, and a prolific motivational author. With a Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering and a Master's in Management, George, an alumnus of Colorado Technical University, initially launched his professional career in a world apart from the multimedia professional that he has become. Finding his path to greatness and pushing beyond his painful past was not a simple task. From an early age, George suffered from a speech impediment and left him, that left him feeling voiceless and devoid of an opinion. He was also a victim of sexual abuse, beginning at the age of four and continuing at various times until the age of 12. George suffered the loss of his primary caregiver, his grandmother, at the age of seven, and was moved around more times than he can remember. He finally settled with his aunt, who eventually became addicted to crack cocaine during his early teens. These occurrences forced George to retreat within himself, resulting in self-blame and low self-esteem. As a result, he allowed himself to become further victimized through various circumstances. These things happened because he had yet to understand the wealth within his personal value. Eventually, George found in his voice his ability to articulate tools for personal success that can be applied virtually to any of life's profound situations, regardless of when they occur. His presentations are focused around the concepts of total, accept, total, excuse me, total acceptance, forgiveness, and recognizing and projecting your personal value no matter the circumstance. This lucidity positioned him to become a sought after resource of motivation due to his sensibility and real world approach to what he calls seemingly insurmountable situations that require an introspective and retrospective approach. He also served as a guest subject matter expert on multiple internet radio programs, and listeners have come to appreciate his delivery of timely advice on self-empowerment, relationships, self-marketing, and the importance of establishing and following through on personal goals. When you create a small positive change for yourself, everything you're connected to becomes better, says George. Many have described his coaching style as caring, honest, direct, concerned, and that he is willing to sit in the trenches with you until you are able to dig yourself out. He unashamedly uses his own life as a sounding board and is constantly reminded that all have wonderful stories to share success at life they you in May of 2010 with sit or stand living successfully beyond your shadows. Endorsed by internationally renowned motivational speakers D.L., George's mentor, Sit or Stand is an insightful and thought-provoking literary contribution inspired by the trials and triumphs of George. The book is positioned all the, this, the book is positioned to all readers to get reacquainted with themselves and discover the true meaning of their life's events 
in the same manner that has made George climb from victim to victor. Sit or stand has been met with acclaim and continues to motivate others to positive self-awareness. Because you are divinely 
here for a certain reason. All of you wearing blue hats and blue gowns, I can pick apart each reason why each one of you were here for a reason. Now it's time you understand that. It's time you understand that this is the first step because now you have a new choice this. After you receive your paper or diploma or whatever you call it, now you have new job options. So you're not going to go back to work thinking, I'm going to go and get that raise that raising this new role in the job you have. Now you're thinking, how can I transfer in the IT department or in the double office? Or how can I transfer it into a company that will respect the work that I've done for myself? See, you want to teach us how to treat you. Understand that the way that I see you treat you is the way that I will treat you. Even if I treat you any better, you cannot receive anything more than you let yourself receive. See, no one told me that I couldn't do anything that was on that paper, on what, three or four pages, but because I did not understand it, I could not receive it at the time. I spent 27 years as, as a stutterer, so bad that I couldn't talk in public. But now I'm here, talking freely. Some of the circumstances that I've gone through, many people ask me, wow, you're not crazy, you're not suicidal, you're not damaged, you're not angry. Oh, I was one of those things. But I made the choice. The key word this evening is choices. The key word is choices. So no matter what I say in the next 12, 13, 14 more minutes, understand that this is all about choices. And the choices you made are followed by the people who are here to actually support you. So let me just so let me just paint a picture as to how as to how powerful your choices are. So the choice you made to start going to school, so let's say you have a child at home. Or you're raising a niece or a nephew, and it's common, you know, in these households. I was raised by aunts and uncles and you know, grandparents. But by you putting in the hard work and you sacrificing the time that you could have spent doing anything possible, you chose to put in the work. Even without saying a word, you show someone watching you that great, great things come with great sacrifice. And if you're willing to do the work, you're also willing to enjoy the outcome. You see, my kids don't have to wonder if I'm going to college. Why? Because my, because my two-year-old will sit right next to me on his computer while I'm typing my term papers. He's already telling me what he's going to school at night. I'm going to say a word because I just did it by action. My parents didn't go to college, but it's not their fault. I don't blame them for anything. It just made it just a little harder for me to be motivated because I didn't have that support system. So what you created is not just for you. And when you become better for yourself, everything that you connected to is now better. Because you're a better parent now, you're a better son, you're a better daughter, you're a better friend, you're a better wife, you're a better husband, you're a better worker. You're all of them. So this, all of this is your moment. This is their moment too. It's their moment too because they're smiling for you. You know, as soon as you guys started walking in, I saw a flood of, you know, flash bulbs and, you know, uh, cell phone pictures and Polaroids and all this. It's Polaroid too. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, wow. That's what it's about. So when you go home and you have this, you know, have whatever it is on your mantle, every person that walks through your home and sees that knows that that means work. That means work. Yeah, so you may have a little bump in the kitchen. But we all can use the money to make, right? So you have a raise and then six months later, but you want more, right? But it's not about that. It's about the job. It's about the job. And now you have those options now. And if you notice, know, I didn't even look at my paper because I said, I wrote all this stuff and it doesn't even go to things. Because when I came here, at, I was here at 1.30, I was here an hour and a half just watching and said, I can't use anything that I wrote. Because I needed to be specific to, to everything that I was talking about. I saw something of you holding your children, uh, running up and down the halls with your babies, in your robes, and making sure the robe didn't split down the middle, all this stuff. And they were so proud of you, and you had these big smiles. And then and some of you, you know, some of you look like my aunt, some of you look like my sister, some of you look like me. But then you all had this bright look like, wow, this day is finally here. I mean, that, that, that look was like, okay, I'm tired. I've taken that last test. I've emailed the instructor the last time asking for her help or his help. 
And with the grace, they've given that help because you inspire them to keep doing this next year. Trust me, as an instructor, they have to be inspired by the instructees. So you sitting here is proof that they did their work. So that's why this is all about you, but it's, but it's also about everybody that you're also connected to. And I hope you're proud of yourself, too. Because what, yeah, what is with some graduates is that they walk into this new world of opportunity but still do not have the, the clear understanding that they deserve it. You know, they get the job offer and they call their mom and cry and all this, but I'm talking about stop crying. Did you go to school? Did you pay the 18 months, the nine months? I don't care if it's 60 days, did you take the time out, you know, to do this? Yeah, you know, share some tears, you know, let's go for drinks, but walk in the grace that you deserve this. Because again, when you walk in that, people are going to give you what you deserve. They're not going to give you something that they don't think that you deserve. So when you get that, you know, I'm not saying if, because notice that's people confirmation. I don't use if in my vocabulary. I, use, I say when. So when you receive that next opportunity, it may be next year, it may be, you know, the next year. It will happen. But respect the time that it takes, because everything that you're doing is for purpose. And if someone's watching that, um, I was on a radio show, the first radio show that I did, and this speaks to the testament of not understanding your voice. Um, uh, I was on Facebook one day, and a 13-year-old boy, and he said, you're the first man I could talk to in my whole life. And I had never met this young man in my life. And he was a Michigan. And I was here, oh, I was here in DC at the time. So I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, um, I heard you talk about your issues with uh, your issues with sexual abuse as a child, and I think he was 14 at the time. And he said, uh, at age four, I was raped. At age nine, I was raped again. And again, I, I was it was late at night, and I'm thinking, am I reading this clearly, or or is it you know is it my exhaustion? Because I didn't know what I was reading. And he says. My grandmother said it was okay to talk to you because she knows that you're the first man that I could ever talk to because I can't trust men. So something in my spirit said, you know, follow this. So I said, well, can I talk to your grandmother on the phone? Because I had never done that before. And I actually called the grandmother and she told me the story. I'm like, this is real. And uh, this young man at 14 can never sleep in the bed alone. He slept with his grandmother until he was 16 years old. And it wasn't because he was a baby, it was because one of the incidents involved someone breaking into his room and doing this to him like that. So the only thing he could do in his room is get his clothes and leave. Uh, so that's for 14 years later, no, I'm sorry, four years later. And well, he calls me dad now. So I tell people I have three sons now. I have an 18 year old that's gone, well, they just got a full scholarship to Juilliard. <laughs> work when they're supposed to, not when we expect it to. And I was about to cancel my radio show because I didn't feel like I was, you know, I was reaching anybody. But it proved to me that I never know who I'm reaching. And uh, he'll call me like every once a month and say, hey dad, how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing good. Now mind you, four years, I said I'm not make this, this guy this ever in my life. But he tells everybody his dad's in D.C. because he never had one. And I said, okay, I'll call that one. You know, he could pick anybody from Anybody in the world. He picked me. And to this day, uh, I'm actually writing his story in a book right now, actually. Uh, because I feel that his story not only inspired me, but if it, but if it can move me to speak on it every chance I get, I know that it can also move mountains for someone else. And I, and, and I say this story because at some point you're going to run into somebody that's going to tell you something that you did for them that you didn't even realize was a moment. And you were just being your natural self. You were just telling your story. Because we all have one. We all have a story. It's important. All your feelings are valid. When someone tells you you just get over it, that's just an excuse that they have nothing else to contribute to your life. At that moment, 
I tell people, I don't need to hear you to tell me you're over. Just tell me you don't have anything else to say. But everything I say is valid. But you have to also understand that you have to make a valid as well, too. <laughs> so I say all of this, um, you know, I know that you guys are graduating with, with these, you know, with, with these newfound fields of study and all this. And, and, and it's actually great because, again, you, you do not have the new options. Um, that I want you to exercise. But not only that, I want you to think about going back from this moment, going back into your communities and saying, um, what can I do? What can I do? How can I share this story in the school? Because I'm pretty sure some of you have stories about wanting to walk out when it got tough. Wanting to leave with that, um, when that one paper or that thing you had to do for class it was just, just a bit too much. I remember being in the middle of my master's program. Paid up and everything. I paid it and I said, God, I can't stop. I don't pay it. It's going to be $18,000, $25,000, $30,000 for it. How do I don't just give it up? But the thing was, I had to realize breakthrough happens when you break down. Breakthrough happens when you break down. I want you to think of this whole scenario that I was thinking about one day. I was writing a new book. And uh, one of my sons was playing with a flower pot when it was messed with the dirt. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm playing the dirt. And then I realized, wait a minute. Some of the most beautiful things in the earth came from dirt. Some of the most beautiful things I look at outside in nature came from dirt. But the interesting thing about dirt is that things grow when the ground breaks. If, if, if the ground doesn't break, there's no break for it. So all of your breakage is for new things to happen. Don't be afraid of it. Welcome it. Now don't sit in it way too long because once you sit in something too long, you don't know how to come out of it. You welcome it, you say, hey, you know what? I'm here. What is it that you're supposed to teach me? Because I've never met an adversity that never taught me a valuable lesson. I will tell you that. Everything that was said about me, you know, going through whatever, okay. And if I had to do it all over again just to stand up here and do this and to do it for the countless people I've done, I would, I would go through it again. Because it's my life. I've never been given anything that I can handle. Now, I wouldn't put it on you because you may not be able to handle that because it's not for you. We all have a lane in this world. So respect everything that you've gone through and understand that it brought you to this point. And you have so much stuff to do. I'm looking at all of you and I see the, you know, I, you know, I see the wheels turning. You know, I see the thought process of, yeah, I have so much stuff to do. I don't care if you're 22 or 62. You have so much work to do. You know? Um, thank you. You know, there's, uh, there's one thing I say every morning. Well, and if I don't say it in the morning, I say it in the daytime. I say, you know, I say to myself, how can I use what I know to get where I'm going? How can I use what I know to get where I'm going? And I'm also so very conscious of the people that I talk to and the words I use. Now, I'm not perfect at it, but sometimes I'll say things that I have to apologize for. But for the most part, I'm conscious of what I impart because I know that a hello can make, you know, can make somebody's day. A smile, if someone doesn't want to smile at me. Because my son told me that the day, which was last week, he said, Danny, you know, I opened the door for this lady, but she didn't say thank you or anything. I said, well, why did you do it? Why did I teach you to do it? He's like, because it's the right thing to do. I said, favor comes in different forms. And it'll come back to you. I said, you're the child, so you're okay. But you don't know what's on her mind that prevents her from actually receiving that. But I guarantee you, at some point in the day, she's gonna think about that little nine-year-old boy that opened the door for her when you didn't have to. We don't put time on people on our constraint. We let them sit in what we give them, you know? And when you remove that, you take the pressure off of yourself to impress people. <coughs> you take the pressure off. You know, I tell people, I have no competition. I had this one scenario where I was doing an interview for this project for DCTV. And I was interviewing, I believe it was the Boys and Girls Club, and one of our project peers was like, oh, don't you like Baby Oprah? I said, no, I'm not. He's like, why? Wow. I'm the best quarter George. I can't do what Oprah does. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You know, my whole life trying to be someone that I wasn't going to be, but I can be the best Corey. And that's what I love about me is that 
I'm, I am my direct competition. All this on the side of me, if you're running, you keep looking on the side of you, at some point you're going to fall because you're going to miss a limb or a rock or a branch in the path. When you, could, when you should be looking ahead, this is your land, not over here. That's, that's for me, that's for you, this is mine. I'll put the blinders on because I want to do well. And at some point, then you're going to find out what you do very well. I know that this is, you know, I know that this is something you do well, <laughs> but you're not going to hear. You're not going to hear. And I won't be surprised if I find out that some of you have gone on to speak to somebody else. I won't be surprised if you guys become business owners, or executives, authors, or teachers, or... I'm like, okay, well, I expect it. I expect it just from everybody I meet. Even if they don't expect it from themselves. So now, it's time for me to let you understand that it's time for you to expect this too. Um, I want to make sure that I give you these, these five pointers. And this is the only thing that I think we want to do from this day. Um, these five points of resolution that, that I feel will help you in times of lack of self-motivation. And this just speaks to the fact that no matter what anybody tells you or tries to impart on you, if you don't believe it, it doesn't mean you'll believe it. So the first thing I want to say is honor yourself. Honor yourself by being here because you're the ones willing to take it. They will honor you no matter what you do. See, family, friends love you at your lowest, at your highest. But you have to love yourself in between all those points. Because when you honor yourself, you're, you know, as, as I said in the beginning, you're teaching me how to treat you. So notice, I've learned that in the moments I didn't treat myself well, others didn't treat me well. And I'm like, yeah. But the moment I started treating myself well, they realized they couldn't do what they used to do, right? You know, they couldn't do what they used to do for you. And also when you honor yourself, you're also telling yourself that you expect the best for yourself. And it's not a conceited notion at all. It's like, why shouldn't I expect the best if I'm doing work? Right. Number two, let the backdrop of your life, which means all stories involved, good and bad, everything tangible and intangible. Let it represent everything that you are. You know, it was, uh, I had this scar on my hand, and it was because I was pushed down, and it was an accident, kids were fighting at school, and there was a scar on my hand, and someone asked me, so do you ever want to have that scar on your I said, no. Uh, they were like, why? I said, well, it's mine. Um, it's a part of my life. It's not hurting me, it's not hurting you. But for some reason, it's bothering you that I have my scar on my body. Why is it bothering you? And they kept it and said, okay, well then if I don't have a problem with it, and if I'm walking and talking and speaking fine, it's not a problem. But only the thing that is your life. Because when you all that, guess what happens? You leave little to no room for no one to call you on. So, so I have this funny thing going on in my life now when I used to not talk, now I talk too much. So, <laughs> so I have friends about it tell me, God, you talk a lot. I said, well, you know, and, and I own this, right? So I tell them, you just figure this out. So I, how can I be thinking about something I already knew? I'm, you know, I'm making up for lost time. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, it's amazing that when you own everything that you are, you become the driver of the car. And with most cars, they have other seats, so not can take other people along. You may have to have a car seat, you know, for the babies and all this, but you're driving that car. And whatever you end up is because you chose to get there. With little uh, to no regret, because if you follow your heart, it's going to lead you to places where you question at first, but at some point, but you want to trust the fact that you're supposed to be there. I've had to make choices where I have to sacrifice money because of what was asked of me was not of my spirit. I was asked to do things in life, and, and, but it wasn't anything bad, but it wasn't anything that I felt good at for my spirit. I said, I have to live with those decisions. I have to live with those choices. And if I spend this little money and you know, all some shoes and some mortgage, that choice is still there. I have to tell people why I chose what I chose. But 
when I said no, and I probably said no, I want your baby to clean conscience. Now, I could use that money, of course, but I got the money somewhere else. I got what I needed, and I realized I always got what I needed. Have you noticed that when you come out of some type of controversy, you always have what you needed? Uh, I'm 39 years old, so I just realized I'm watching the movie Buzz and this thing is movie so old that there was a point in a movie where I think it was it was really it was really the good wish that, that told Nora that you've always had what you need. You know, I just realized what she was talking about. She could have always gone home. Home is home is where you make it. And I'm not even talking about home. But a lot of times we don't know how to call upon our resources, our family, our friends, those things that are around us that want to be there for us. So don't feel like you, feel like you have to climb these mountains without the right equipment, because you're gonna fall off and kill yourself. So, um, so take heed to all, the, all of these people because see, this is one session. There's twice as many people here for you guys. So, so somebody's here, at least, at least two to each person because I'm counting all these rows and the seats. At least two of each person is here for you. You know, and even those that are here by yourselves, someone's here for you. I am. You know, I don't track of it because I get a little, you know, stuck in myself. But number, uh, I want to go to number three really quick. Choose excellence as your personal standard. Everything that you do, you have to vouch for. Even if it takes, it takes a little bit more time, sure, you know, sure the shortcuts are great, but what happens when you take the time to do it the best that you can? Because you usually have only one time to make the best impression. So make it count. You know, make, you know, I don't know what kind of job you're gonna go to after this, but every project you do, put your stamp of excellence on it, because that's what they're gonna talk about. You know, that's the role we're talk, you know, that's the water we're we'll talk about. But you want them to put your name in a good light. Even if no one can say anything bad about you, they can always say something good about you. Oh, and, and I'm going to go number four right quick. Well, actually, I, I talked about number four, so I'm, so I'm going to skip that thing right quick. And number five, which is my most important one, is to pay for the real legacy. Everything that's, everything that's been done to get you here, you now have the opportunity to lead someone else. You know, as I said, you know, tell your story. Talk about those moments that you were down and out. Because it's going to be other students in your shoes. There's going to be children in your life. There's going to be adults in your life that are struggling with anything. Not to school, but school will pay for it. Because these teachers and the staff here do that for you. And in closing, I want you guys to, to think of yourselves as champions. And it's for a certain reason. Champions never see the goal ever being done. They always say, how can I come back the next time around and do it better? You know? How can I do this better? And so we probably need you. As we probably need you, there's one thing I want to say, because I get this all the time and I, and I have this quick answer. Uh, so the next time someone asks you or tells you that you've been through all that, here's what I want you to tell them. Yeah. Yes, I do. Wish, wish for them that they think the same of themselves when they do. Thank you.